I think I think we are live. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Watch It Played, sort of. Um, <laughs> we're here at the satellite studio <laughs> in Pep's apartment. <laughs> We, we came here because um, we did a test run yesterday, and the video quality on my end wasn't great, and I assumed that was because my broadband is terrible. So we came here where there's fiber op, and still, as you're probably noticing, it's a bit blocky, right? And uh, <laughs> we're not sure exactly why. But here we are, and we're not alone. We're also joined by Matt Evans. Matt, why don't you say hi? How's everybody doing? So Matt is going to challenge me to a game of Marvel Dice Masters, right? Yep. Okay, now here's the thing. We both created teams. The team that you brought, is this one that you've been using already? Like, I know you've been playing it for a bit. I've seen the pictures on Twitter. Uh, so is this one you've been using already, or is this like a, a fresh one? Um, I threw together a fresh team. I wanted to go with something a little different than I had tried before, so it just seemed All like... Right. We've got a little bit of a strategy in here, maybe, but I don't know. <laughs> See what happens. I did the same thing. I tried to make a strategy, maybe, um, but I'm not sure if there's one here or not. We'll find out. Um, now, one thing we didn't do before we, we started, Matt, was the action dice, the basic actions. I have them set up with certain colors. I don't know if you have yours set up the same way. Um, Probably not. Can I, can I tell you what I've got, and then you can yeah. match it on your end? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, sure. So I've got gearing up as blue. All right. Let's I've that. Got Power Bolt as red. Yeah, Power Bolt is red. All right, let me do yep. that. Power Bolt is red. The gold is invulnerability, and the green dice are the focus power. All right. And so, anyone who's watching right now, just so you know, I put a link in the description of the event that will take you to pictures of both of Matt's and my team. So if you want to be able to follow along a little more easily with what the powers are, we're not going to be showing the cards on the screen. There's not really enough room for that, but hopefully that will give you a sense of what's going on. Of course, we'll, we'll talk you through it as well. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, there's one, there's going to be uh, an opportunity to ask some questions if you want. If you see the little Q&A button in the corner of your screen, you can go there and suggest questions and then people can upvote them uh, and what have you. But before we answer questions, I think we should play the game. But there is one question I have to answer. because This is the one question I get asked all the time now, Matt. Is Marvel Dice Masters just couriers with a different face? And it's hard for me to answer this, you know, objectively, but in my opinion, no. I, I don't think it is. It certainly shares some similarities. There's very cool uh, dice with you know custom faces, and those look very similar, and there's energy and, and that sort of thing. But in terms of the gameplay, um, you know, you're, you're building your own team that you're bringing to the table. You're attacking and defending, and you have to make choices about who's going to attack, who's going to hang back, and that sort of thing. Uh, what's your experience been that way, Matt? Would you, would you agree with that, or what do you think? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think uh, aside from the fact that they share you know, the, the same type of dice where half of it's energy and half of it's your, your creature or your character. Um, and the fact that you're, you know, you're playing the same sort of uh, dice building or deck building element where you start out with basic dice and you end up building and adding additional things to it. Aside from those two similarities, uh, I think the games are very different. I mean, this is a dueling game. It's a head-to-head -head 1v1, and it's all about damaging the other player, you know, in, in a, a, like a dueling Magic the Gathering style card game almost. Uh, but... Yeah, there's definitely no... I mean, Quarters is a totally different style. You're going for victory points. You're trying to score creatures. This is a totally different game. Right. Okay. Well, listen, I think it's time to do this. What do you say? Definitely. Let's do okay. It. Well, we're just going to adjust our end of the camera down so you guys can see the, uh, the play mat. You should be able to see uh, mats as well. I guess you have to adjust yours too, right? Yeah. Very, very high tech here. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me drop the camera and smash into the table or something. All right. You have to tell me how that looks on your end, Rodney. All right, that's looking good. So we're gonna need to come up a little bit, a little bit more. I'd say that's about perfect. Yeah, excellent. All right, Matt, can you see okay on your end? Yeah, that's fine. Obviously, again, we've got it's a little blocky, but uh, you should be able to make out at least which dice are out if you can't make out the specific die faces. All right. Well, we should find out who's gonna go first, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, listen, why don't you um, roll your die, and uh, let's see what you get. It's not a very good roll. <laughs> I got a one. Well, Pep gave me this die, and uh, I got a five. Pretty good. I think that's going to you know, just sort of set the tone for how this game is. You know what, Pep? I think at this angle, they can see that the other side is also a five. <laughs> and then I think... <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> the angle of this camera is, is giving away the cheat. Okay, so tell you what. We'll, we'll roll this with a proper die. 
That was pretty good. Oh my goodness, can you believe it? A one? Are you kidding me? All right, uh, re-roll? Yes, go ahead and re-roll. I rolled another one. Okay, excellent. Another one, perfect. All right, there we go. And that is a that's a legit six, everybody. I yeah. promise you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're ready to get started now. I think so too. I'm just going to adjust my camera a little bit because uh, I think when I move a little bit, the camera's wiggling. So I'm trying to. So you guys don't have to deal with the camera wobbling too much. I'm going to try okay, to adjust sure. that. I got to show you guys once again the awesome dice bag that I got from uh, from Ralph, who sent that to us. He's uh, he's making these um, himself by hand. And it's his plan to um, to make more of them and maybe give a few to us to give away in a contest or something. So I think that's that's pretty great. Yeah, those are really cool. Uh, let me just do one uh, quick thing here. I'm going to see if I can adjust the focus a little bit on the uh, the camera and maybe bring it into focus a little sharper. All right. I think that's about as good as we're going to be able to get it. And I'm going to start by rolling four dice from my bag. Yeah. And of course they're going to be sidekicks. I have an option to re-roll any of these if I want, and to be honest, I don't think I will. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna field the uh, the sidekick here, and I think I'm gonna use all three of this energy to pick up. I think I'm gonna grab a gambit. You know why? Because that's what Luke would want me to do. So <laughs> grab a gambit, and that's. I don't think I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna save that little blocker there. All right. I'm up here. So. I made four dice, three dice. Oops. Of course, I dropped one already. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, two sidekicks and two energy. Do you want those sidekicks? I don't think you really need them, to be honest. I'm not going to be attacking <laughs> yeah. you. Uh, boy, you know, I'm actually going to take this to... I'm going to spend these two and buy a Ghost Rider. And I am going to feel both of these two guys. And uh, that's it for me. I'm going to leave him there. Not going to attack or anything? No, I'll leave him there. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Pretty boring, Matt. All yeah. right. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to roll up my four sidekicks. And yeah, I got another one I think I'll field as well. And this time, I'm going to use three energy to pick up a human torch. Okay. And that's going to go away into my use pile. Over to you. All right. So, what we got here? Oh, those just got scattered everywhere. But I did roll two more sidekicks. I don't really want that many sidekicks, to be totally honest with you. I'm going to keep these two and I'll re roll these guys. I got another sidekick, so I will feel him. So I'm trying not to have my dice go everywhere, but I want to You're camp. really succeeding with that, Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? So I'm going to spend these three. I got a shield energy here, so I can pick up an angel. All right, adding an angel in. Okay, well, listen, my bag is uh, obviously empty, so I'm going to refill it. I say obviously because you start with eight sidekicks, mm -hmm. and we've just obviously gone through all of ours. I've pulled out. Oh, I got my gambit. All right, let's roll these up. And I got the gambit side. I want it. Whew. Uh, what level is that? Just for yes. Moment. What level is that? I'm gonna have to look here. It's the but level if you, one. If you feel that you can tell me, I'll, I'll if you feel that I'll just make it easier. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I think. Hmm. I'm definitely gonna need to keep this to field him. Having all these sidekicks, maybe more than I want. I, I'm gonna re-roll one of these sidekicks. Okay. All right, I got energy. And so then I'm going to uh, put this one into the field. I'm going to field, let's see, th this. I'm going to field him with the fist energy. That's going to allow me to go into my bag right. and draw two dice. I pulled out those two. I think I'll keep the human torch. The other okay. one goes back into my bag and... Ah, very good. Okay, so the reason why I saved this energy is because I was hoping if I had a field cost, I'd, I'd be able to pay for it. But this one's actually for free, so that's good. All right. So I'm going to put him in. And with the lightning bolt, I'm going to have to look at our global effects here and make sure there's nothing I can use. And I'm sorry, what level did you say that gambit was? Oh, the gambit's a level one. Level one, okay. And, so and the human good. torch is a level one as well. Yep, got it. Well, I think I'm going to. Um, I think I'm going to strike the first blow here, Matt. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, you you put a a, a green goblin character uh, on your team that has a global ability, 
And it says, it says, uh, I, <laughs> I heard that. Yep. Uh, it says I can pay a, a lightning bolt and knock out one of my own psychic characters to deal two damage to a target character. Um, right. Actually, I'd rather deal it to you. I wish that effect was a little better. What, what, what have you got in front of you? You just got sidekicks, right? Three sidekicks, yeah. You know what? I think I'll, I'll hold off on that. I'll wait till you get something in there that's a little bit, a little bit beefier. Um, okay. And instead, let me see. I just got to look. Let's, let's look at your field. You've got three sidekicks up. If I attack right now, you're going to be able to block everything I've got. Uh, I think, I think I will. I think I'll just hold off. I'll let you take your turn. Okay. So I'm going to draw from this pile here. I've got nothing left. Taking your advice, I remember you had said you were talking about fielding those uh, those sidekicks. It's, you're effectively almost culling them from your bag when they're just sitting there in the lines. It's kind of nice to get the uh, the real dice early on. Yeah, that's right. It increases the probabilities you'll pull up one of the things right. you want. Ah, two shields. Two shields. That's not an angel. I'm going to draw this guy. I'm going to draw my angel here. I'm going to draw this guy too. All right, I'm going to roll these two. It's not what I wanted. Not at all. So I guess I'll field this guy. Now I've got four shields. I'm off to a good start rolling. That's not going to do me any good to bring him in. So let me see what I can buy here. You know, I'm going to spend this to... Ooh, this is painful. You guys have to watch me think live. Oof, usually we get to pause it for this stuff. <laughs> That's right. When we do our live playthroughs, <laughs> we do pause it out. Uh, all right. I'm going to grab this. Uh, I'm going to grab this gearing up, and I'm going to put it here. And uh, let's see. I will. You know what? I'm not going to attack either. I'm going to leave these guys on defense. All right. Well, I've put out these these four sidekicks here. Just as a reminder to me of what you actually have. Uh, yep. Potentially, it's sitting there if I attack you. All right, I'm going to go into my bag and draw out four more. But before I do that, I have to remove any unused energy. So I drew out three dice. I don't have any more, so I'm going to have to put these back in and draw another one out. Oh, look at that, a sidekick. <laughs> All right, so we'll roll these up. Four energy. Now, this is what I wanted to see, because I wanted to start picking up some of my, my, better, my better dice. I think I, think I got to do Punisher. Anyone right. knows me is not going to think that's much of a surprise, but I'm going to throw Punisher there into the team. All right. And now, whether or not I want to attack, that's the question. You've got four defenders now. You know what? I think I will. I'm going to attack with uh, my Human Torch. All righty. And let me see this card here. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, are you giving or are you not feeling me? So, yeah, I will block with, uh, I'll block with one of my um, sidekicks. Okay. And I'm putting him up in front of this little... I'll just put him up here in my attack zone so you know he's there. So we get knocked out then. Yep, he's out. In, in, the, uh, in your prep area. Yep. Anything else? Oh, no, you've already attacked. So that's yeah, it. That's it for me. All right. Start anyway, so I'm going to draw. i got three in my bag, and there's one in this prep area. i got to reshuffle and draw one more. It's the real catch about attacking because, yeah, I knocked out one of your... Sidekicks, which is fine, but now you've got the back to re-roll and add to your four dice you're rolling. Yes. Oh, man, not I a huge fan of that. Um, I've got five energy here. I guess I can put him into play. All right, so I'm going to put this aside because I think I'm going to keep that, and I'll just re-roll. I have to get a mask. All right, so I'm going to roll both of these. Sure. All right, so this guy costs... Yeah, sure. I'll keep this lightning bolt here. And... Nope, actually, I'm going to spend this lightning bolt to bring this guy in, and I'll spend these three to buy another angel. So what level Ghost Rider do you have there? Uh, that is a level one Ghost Rider. Ah, uh, okay. I don't, I don't mind that too much. Yeah. I want to thin out those. You're just going to attack one of those. <laughs> All right, I'm going to attack with two of my sidekicks. Two of the sidekicks are coming in, huh? Yep. All right. 
I'll tell you what. I am going to block you. I'm going to block you with Gambit and with one of my sidekicks as well. So we're just going to knock each other out here. Okay. So I'm going to lose both, I'm lose both my sidekicks. And I've got those two guys left. All right. Now hopefully this is going to help me roll into something good here. So in my bag, there is a single die. <laughs> Let's just hope I can pull a Punisher. That would be just about perfect. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not, no Punisher. That's disappointing. Okay, well, I get to roll a bunch of dice at least. Maybe I can get one of my good dice with all the energy I'm about to roll. Hmm. Well, I did roll some energy, that's for sure. And sidekicks. I think I will... Uh, I'm actually going to keep one of these sidekicks. I'm going to re-roll the other one. I'd like to get some energy. Well, you know what, actually, with a one, two, three, four, five, I got five energy here. You know what, I'm going to keep both, I'm going to keep everything I've got here. I'll field the two uh, sidekicks. And with this energy, I'm going to pick up one of my, my beefier characters. I think I'm going to grab Nova. Nova's coming out to play. All right. All right, he costs all five of that energy. I don't like Nova too much on your team, I'll be honest with you. I think, uh, I think, I don't know if I want to attack or not, to be honest. I'm still kind of sweating this out a little bit. I think I will. I'm going to swing in with uh, two of my sidekicks. Okay. Mm, see, I don't want you to let that... See, there's, there's an interesting, as I play this, this is like, you know, a few games in for me, but there's an interesting thought to, like, almost wanting your sidekicks to get knocked out so you can roll those higher energy rolls. So it's like, almost, do I want to, you know, do I want to give you that free knockout on your guy? Or do I want to let you score a victory point to make your dice pool smaller? But yes, uh, sorry, score damage. Excuse me. Um, well, you even too. So yeah, I'll block you with one of them for sure, and the other one I can also block if I really want to. Uh, you know what? I'll let you take the first hit. That's fine. So oh you really? Can, yeah, you know, I'll just block the one. The other okay, guy. block the one of them. All right. The other guy can get through. Go to your uh, use pile. So and let's see. I knocked out one of yours. Did I? One of your sidekicks? Yes, so I've got three in my uh, KO. All right, so your, your damage is down to uh, 19. Yep. All right, all done. I'm drawing my three that are left in my bag. i got to reshuffle. Draw one more. Ooh, it's a sidekick. And then these three. This, is, this might give me a little bit more to roll. Um, a lot of energy. It's great. Boy, I would like this. I really want to reroll the angel. Yeah, I am going to reroll this angel by himself here. Yes, that's what I wanted. And that looks like it is a. What level angel is that? That's level four angel. That's lovely. A level four angel. Oh, oh, sorry, level three. Level three. I'm sorry. So I looked at his health. I meant four. I was gonna wonder what kind of special yeah. dice do you have? <laughs> yeah, I, I know what I'm doing, kind of, sort of. <laughs> I'll feel this guy because he's free. Um, I got what? One, two, three, four, five energy there. Yeah, I'm gonna use that pretty quickly. I think here, you're so. trying to intimidate me, talking like level four dice. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, then I will spend this one to field angel. And then right. I'll spend uh, the rest of this, this other five, to grab my Professor uh, X. Professor X. Okay, right on. Um, and then I am going to, I'm going to attack with Angel, and he can't be blocked by anyone lower level than him, so he's going to get right through. Unless you have an ability you want to use on him, unless there's a global ability you want to trigger. Uh, no, I don't have any energy left, so you've, you've got me. So he, you're going to hit me for three here? Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah. Three. That's obnoxious. Okay. <laughs> and you were unblocked, so he's going to disappear at least. He's back in my uh, use pile. Okay. Well, let's see if I can fish out something good from. I know I'm going to get Punisher at least. Hopefully, a couple things more. Let's see. Maybe Nova? No. No. I'm swimming in sidekicks here. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I couldn't even roll the good side of Punisher. Oh, I gotta think. I like the decent side of Punisher. You know, some energy. Yeah, I might. Uh, let's see. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna re-roll Punisher, but I'll keep. I'll keep everything else. Come on, Punisher! Don't fail me now. There he is. All right. There he is, my man. Okay. 
that's going to cost me one energy if I want to put him in. Uh, so I will spend one. All right. And what field. level is he? Oh, what level is he? That's a great question. He's uh, he's two. level two. Yeah. Level two. One five two. Wow, he hits hard, huh? Yeah, he's a pretty hard hitter. His ability is when he's assigned to attack, I can knock out one target opposing character, unless you're willing to prevent the effect by paying two life. Oof. All right, so I am gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack you here, Matt. All right. All right. Um, it's yeah. it's going to be uh, probably unpleasant for you. <laughs> it will be, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. I'm minute. going to attack. I don't know why I attack with Angel by himself. I should have attacked with more. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not understanding why I did that. I'm gonna I'm gonna swing with everything except for one okay. of, of my sidekicks. Now, when Punisher is declared as the attacker, I can just knock something out. I think I'd like to knock out your Ghost Rider. Yeah, unless I unless I block it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take two life because it's gonna net me less in the end. All so, right. I take it. So I'm down to 17. You're down to 17. I, I'm gonna also use um, one of my uh, lightning bolts here. Okay. And. I'm going to use your global ability on Green Goblin now to deal two damage to a target character. Ew. Okay. That's not good. No, it's not great. So I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use that on Ghost Rider, and I'm going to okay. use another one on your sidekick. So I know your sidekick is going to be knocked out, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's a good question. Maybe I've never had that happen. So if you deal two damage, does that damage stay through the whole combat? It's going to stay through the combat. So right now, effectively, your Ghost Rider is a two-one. Uh oh. And this guy's knocked out as well, so he's out and... Um, so you've got one blocker, and he's got a, a life total of, of one. Right, so I'll block, I'll block your Punisher, and then okay. you're going to get through with, what, you've got three, four, five damage to get through? One, two, three, four, five, yep, that's right. Ow. I don't know why I didn't attack you with more of my characters. And I have to knock out one of my uh, psychic characters to do that damage. Yes, okay. So um, I'll actually knock out one of the ones that were in the attack zone. Okay. So you right? can up one hit point then. So you can take one hit point back. Yeah, exactly. 13 now, right? And you killed my Punisher, and I knocked out your Ghost Rider. Oh, that's right. Your Punisher got knocked out. Okay. okay. And these guys, so you've got one guy left in your prep area, and your unit you is there as well. Sorry, I'm trying to match it on my end here. Yeah, sure. And what's your health total here? Is it? Uh, I've got thirteen now, right? Thirteen. Had one yeah. Less damage there. Yeah. I've got one, two, three, four, and these two. Keeping myself. I've only got one defender now, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm nervous about like looking like a complete fool on the internet, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> I do it all the time, Matt. I do it all I the time. Say, Matt, I, I do this all the time. <laughs> that's a high level ghost rider, but that's a low level angel. I'm not loving that. I'm going to keep those guys there. Is that another one of your level four dice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> going to reroll these three right here. Hang on. That went off the table. Got to reroll. House rule. All right. I think if it goes off the table, you don't get it. Oh, really? Is that... That's a different house rules. Can we apply both house rules because we're in different houses? Oh, yeah, it's true. All right. I've got a pretty good Ghost Rider here that I can throw in for a decent price. Keep that lightning bolt, though. Well, that's an obvious choice. He's getting fielded no matter what. I'm going to grab... And, yeah, I'm just going to spend all this to field these guys, and I'll spend my last three to buy another angel. And do I want to attack? I will attack, and, uh, yeah, I'll attack with one sidekick. What level's your Ghost Rider? Is the uh, level oh, three? Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. He's all three. Whew. He's a I like that uh, the common Ghost Rider card. He's great. He's just he's two, and I was thinking he's actually a pretty good card just even to build energy because he has the chance of rolling two bolts early in the game and you can acquire him for two money or two energy. He's, he's yeah, a, that's true. Yeah, that is pretty strong. So you're, you're you're pushing in with that sidekick, are you? Single sidekick. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll block that. Okay, so I'm not sure. gonna try that. Yeah. <clears throat> And right. I saw a comment there about uh, the quality of my feed and how it's not quite as good compared to yours, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, if there was something I could do about that, I certainly would. Um, unfortunately, this is something we haven't quite worked out. I thought uh, relocating might help. Uh, I think it's helped a little bit, but it's not, it's not made all the difference, that's for sure. 
wow, look at what I'm pulling out of my, my bag now. Whew, that's a lot of good stuff. Oh, boy. And uh, I have to put everything back in and draw one more out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Matt. <laughs> Matt. The <laughs> team is assembling energy. here. <laughs> this needs to be an energy turn. I want to see energy. <sighs> well, you, there's a little energy. Oof, that's a lot of creatures. People. Now, it looks like my uh, my video has, has dropped out suddenly. <laughs> um, it actually, wow, it just came back, and it looks yeah. a lot more clear than it was. Like, okay, we're back. I can see all the dice facings like quite well now. No, no, it's, it, it could be a temporary thing. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> uh, the problem with rolling all these wonderful characters is now I have to pay to field them. Yes. Uh, actually, I, with the energy I have here, I can field all of those guys, and I don't see why I wouldn't. Um, so I'm going to spend one energy to bring out Nova, oh, no. two energy to bring out Punisher, and no energy to bring out the Human Torch. And I'm sure you want to know the levels on these guys. So the Nova is level one. Okay. The Punisher is level 16. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, three. I got the special whiskey in space. And the Human Torch is level one. Okay, Human Torch at level one. I've got a Human Torch here. So he's the zero two two. Okay, and you've got those three in. Yikes. That yeah. is... So if you totally crush me, we can rematch this, right? <laughs> yeah, we can, we can always rematch here. I don't think I'm going to... I don't think. You've got that one blocker. Yeah. Uh, so I know I'll get a little bit through, but you'll probably block the Punisher. He's the strongest one. So at most, I'm going to get six through here. Yeah, but Nova has that... Uh, well, Nova's effect only resolves if you um, cause him some damage. Uh, yeah, so I would probably just avoid him. Yeah, I mean you don't have to avoid him. Believe me, I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna push through with everything here. Okay, and your Punisher, I'm gonna have to pay two life. I'm gonna get net me less than taking the full brunt of a Punisher. So I will block the Punisher, and uh, we will uh, I will knock him out. Yep. And I will stay in. I stay alive, but I take another six damage on top of that. Eef. Yeah, so you, actually, you get knocked out, right? Because his... Uh, the, what's the oh, ghost? I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. I'm knocked out, too. What am yeah. I saying? Yeah, I'm looking at it upside down here. So that's a total of six damage going through to you, which puts you at five, right? Yeah, I'm at five. <laughs> man, I'm so dead already. <laughs> Matt, come on. You're not talking like a superhero here, man. Let's... Oh, I mean, I've, I've got this. You know what I think is, is bizarre? Um, I know you love Captain America. How come you don't have him on your team? Well, I I was going I, I put him on all my teams so far that I played with. I was trying something a little different, but I should represent Captain America at some point. I've got a shield. You do have the shield. All right, yeah. I give you that at least. It's on loan, you know. <laughs> I'm on loan to the Green Goblin. <laughs> I had the Green Goblin. I have such a strange team. You have a strange team. I have Ghost Rider and Angel are just hanging out for some reason. And Putting these back in my bag. I have no dice available. So, oops, I didn't put this away either last time I threw that out. And let me just mention, uh, I do notice we've got some questions coming in here, and we'll definitely uh, answer those just as soon as um, uh, we, we wrap up this, this first match. As soon as you crush me? Oh, Matt, I don't know. I, don't, I, I feel confident, for sure. Yeah. But yep. I, you're not out yet. All right, no, I'm in this. All right, let's see what we can do with this. Um, I'll keep, and that's fine for all that stuff. But I am going to re-roll this angel. What is that? That is a level two angel, and you've got a level one. Uh, the only person that could block me would be Punisher. Okay. What level Ghost Rider are you looking at there? Uh, that's a level one Ghost Rider. Ooh. Not awesome. Not the best. But I will spend this to, um, I guess I'll spend two to buy a Ghost Rider, and then the other two to put those in. I, I have to. I gotta spend. I'm just gonna spend all of this to summon these guys, and I'll buy another Ghost Rider at this point. I'm really kind of desperate. And okay, maybe so these guys can move. I kind of want you to be able to block this guy. <laughs> hmm. So I want to attack you. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's so much better at this game, screaming at their screen right now, being like, "Matt, you're terrible." No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> Damage. So I've got to get your Punisher to stop because that guy's awful, but I don't have any way to make him attack or block me. Yeah, the, the problem is, Matt, if I if I am able to feel Punisher again, he attacks and... Yeah, that just that attack is enough it, to kill me. It's going to do two damage to you if you want to stop me from just automatically knocking out somebody. 
Yeah, so, well, you know, I got to go for broke on this, I think, because if I can't, <laughs> I think either way, I'm going to have to defend with these guys, actually. Because I'm just thinking, if I attack you, I, you're, you can just let that damage go right to you. I think you've already got me in this one, but, well, I'll play it out. I'll play it. I okay, so you're going to hang back. Something that we should do at the end of this is also talk about the rarity distribution of our teams, because that's one thing I'm seeing online, people concerned about, you know, I don't, I don't have all the rare cards. Is that going to affect my gameplay and the, the abilities of my team? Yeah. Uh, that's something to remind me to talk about that a little bit here, uh, just mm -hmm. after it. We wrap up. This might be the wrap up. We'll see. Uh, um, yeah, sure. <laughs> maybe I'll get all uh, sidekicks. Probably I will because all my good guys seem to be out. Let's see if Punisher can do it. I know he normally likes to work alone, but he might have to get a little help from the sidekicks this time. Oh wow! I didn't uh, actually roll the Punisher side I wanted. Um, I, I'm going to re-roll. I think these three here. That guy down there. So. Okay, so there is a Punisher. I didn't end up rolling any sidekicks. I will spend, let's see, I'll spend one, eh, I'll spend this one. And put, no, you know what, I'm sorry, I'm going to change it. I'm going to spend this one here, put yep. Punisher in the field. And I just, I'm going to hang back with my other three, I think. Okay. What is he? Uh, what is his cost? Uh, what level is he? I'm sorry. Sorry, he costs one to field, and he, that's his level one version of him. So he's a four attack. Okay. Hmm. Well, do I attack? That is the question. I guess I do, just to force you to potentially lose. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, you've got to either knock out one of my guys. I mean, yeah, you you got to knock out one of my guys immediately by, of your choice, right? Unless I take two life. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, who are you going to knock out? I'm not going to take the life. Okay, I will, uh, I'll knock out your, uh, your angel. Okay. And then I will defend um, Punisher, obviously. Okay. And he's going to knock me out, and I'm going to knock him out. That's right. All right. I had I didn't have my dice in front of me in my little mini Rodney screen set up here enough, so I thought you had more guys on off on defense than that. So I'm glad I did what I did. So I got four dice here and the other two from last turn. Boy, that sure is a lot of shields. That doesn't really help me a lot right now. Hmm. I'm going to reroll these three. I'm going to keep this guy around. Oh, man. Lots and lots of energy. Um, oh, dear. I don't think you wanted to see that, did you? I think you no, wanted like, to have some defenders. I don't need that right now. I don't really need that too much right now. Hmm. Oh, man. It's, oh, during. When Punisher assigns to attack. Uh, so I'm just wondering if I trigger that global ability. Mm hmm. To, Force him to attack the one for Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. You pay a mask and target character must attack. Does that count as your? That's assigning you to attack, right? Yes, but I think I think you'd have to do that. I think you have to do that during my turn. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, I can't make it. Like you, I mean, yeah. You'd hold on to the energy. During your turn, it would still trigger the same effect. I guess that's what I'm just checking on here. Um, sure. I'll spend, I can spend two to bring him in. Although it's an interesting question, you know, the way it's written, mm -hmm. pay a mask, target character must attack this turn. I suppose if you use that during your turn, you'd be forcing me to attack during your turn? Yeah, I, I, I always assumed it was, it was yeah. during your turn, yeah. But, I mean, you can see you can hang on to energy as well, right? Um, yeah, and then I could just and, spend it. And mm -hmm. use it, you know, during your opponent's turn, but, um, yeah. What's that other global ability here to damage to your character? That's not one. Keep this. But I don't have any blockers anyway, so you're you know you're gonna be able to swing through if yeah. you want to. Sure, if I want to get through. Um. Yeah, that's all right. I'll just spend the rest of this to buy. I'll keep my uh, I'll keep my uh, question mark here, and I'll use the rest to buy. Um. Yeah. Actually, I want this beast. I'm gonna bring in a beast. And um. I'll keep this here. Do I want to attack? 
Who do you have in your your standby? You've got a Punisher ready to go. No, I'm gonna keep. I'm not gonna attack. I'm gonna stay here. Okay. So what about your um my your Ghost Rider? Ghost Rider? What level is he at? He is at two. Did I paid for him? Right? Yeah. I spent two shields to bring him in. So he's, he's at level two. Yep. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna force him to attack. Okay. All right. I'm gonna spend a, a mask and make him swing through. All right, so he's going to do three and get um, un he's going to be unblocked. I'm really wishing I had not spent the question mark as an energy last time because I could have made your sidekick swing through as well and just taken the damage and then been pretty confident, even if I rolled just a couple of sidekicks and a punisher. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I probably could have swung through and won there, but I didn't. So I guess that ends it up for you right now. It's my turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm all set. Sorry. Cool. No, that's all right. So I'm in my bag, and I've got <laughs> two wonderful uh, sidekicks. I'm going to lose the energy that was here, put all this back into my bag, draw two more, and also get that Punisher. Yeah, get that Punisher out of here. Okay. Nothing, nothing great, but maybe enough. It may be enough. Let's see. Oh, I think it's going to be enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, well, oh, shoot. Gambit is going to cost me two, and Punisher is going to cost me one, and I only have one energy. So let me see here. I can... Yeah, actually, I've got this now, I think. Yeah, I think Punisher is your best bet. You can knock yeah. me out and then be unopposed. Yeah, I, what I'll do is I will... Let's see, is there... There's a... Oh, maybe I can block yeah, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll put these guys in here. Mm -hmm. I'll re-roll... I guess before I do that, I'm technically supposed to do any re-rolls I want to do, so I'll re-roll him. And, okay, I'm not going to be bringing him out. Okay. So because I'm not bringing him out, he'll, he'll go to my used pile. And the, the first thing I'll do is I'll pay the lightning bolt to uh, knock out one of my sidekicks and cause two damage. To anyone? So you get rid of this guy? Yeah, I get rid of your sidekick. And then I should be able to swing through for the finish. That's right. Yep. Is that right? That's it. That was <laughs> water. <laughs> no. Well, our our two hobbled teams, uh, they that's that's what happened. That was the outcome. Yeah. Anyway, let, we'll uh, we'll swing the uh, the camera up here a bit, and uh, let's let's have a little banter. And yeah. um, swing this up a ten. And I gotta say, like a, a huge huge thank you to Pep there because he was managing the camera. He was switching it back and forth, so that even if we were talking, if it was your turn, Matt, it was staying on on your table, which was uh, very helpful. Oh yeah, that, yeah. What about that? <laughs> this guy? A round of applause for Pep. Yay! <laughs> and the nasty thing is, I'm on a mic here, so he can't even really hear. <laughs> Can you hear? Can you pick it up a little bit? <laughs> I'll turn him up a little bit. Um, okay. Well, listen. Uh, that was that was a quick match. I, I don't know how long that match took. Um, be interesting to know. Approximately, we started around two thirty. It was about a half an hour. Half an I would hour? say. Okay. Probably. About that. All right. Well, listen. We've we've got some questions here. Before we get to the questions, and thanks again, guys, for your questions. Um, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about the rarity of our teams here. So, on the team that I have here. I have two rare, my Nova and my Black Widow, which I didn't even, oh yeah, I did bring out Nova, that's right, I did have Nova out there, the Black Widow didn't, so those two were rare, and I had an Uncommon, which was Nightcrawler, which we didn't see. The rest of my dice, the Punisher, the Human Torch, the Gambit, and the Storm were all common. So my team that I, you know, I, I won uh, with there was, you know, it had a lot of commons in it, and... I, I was using them more than I was using really the, the more rare or exclusive cards. What about you, Matt? What did you have there for rarity? I, I, about the same breakdown. I had uh, I had uh, a rare. The vibranium shield that I brought was a rare, and I didn't actually field that one. I was uh, I'll tell about my strategy later, I guess. But I only had the only other rare I had was uh, was Green Goblin. And yeah, I we'd, we'd like to hear about your strategy, Matt. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I'd like to at least explain myself a little bit. <laughs> I had a strategy. Total tactical error in that one, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I actually only had I had two rares. Um, the rest of mine were were un, I, had, I had two rares, two uncommons, and the rest were commons. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. And and, and when, rares didn't even hit the table. I know you un unpacked a whole bunch. Actually, this we can answer um, the first question here, which will lead me into what I was going to ask you. But unpacking the the dice that you got. 
So, Pat, would you mind selecting that one that's at the top there, and we'll just so everyone can see which question it is. All right. So this question is coming from from Zach Hedford. He asks Matt and Rodney, did either of you have any issues with the pre-ordering or purchasing of Dice Masters, or what is your opinion of the massive underproduction of the game? Okay. Well, all right. I didn't have any trouble, but I. Uh, <laughs> This makes me feel bad. I, I was I did, did uh, some work for Whiskey on the in, instructional video, right, for the game. So they sent me uh, some early prototype uh, materials beforehand, so I could get to work on that. And then they sent me some of the other dice as well. So uh, I, I didn't have any problems, but that's not really fair the comparison because obviously I had some help, um, some very nice help. Uh, what about you, Matt? How, how was your success? Did you pre-order, or did you just go to the store and try to get some? Uh, I actually pre-ordered. Um, I talked to some of the local game stores around here. I always try to go with them first, um, but they were they're like we've already had. By the time I got around to, to ordering it, it was a you know maybe a week or so after it, things that it really like basically your videos came out and everybody went wow this is really cool. Uh, I jumped on about a week after that and it was it was kind of too late for the local stores. They had said oh we're already stacked up with pre-orders. So okay. I checked online. Um, I pre-ordered online. I think it was like mid-March, um, and then from from CSI, and then they sent me an email that said if you didn't order before the 11th, you're probably not going to get it. Um, so I ended up um, on the on the day that the day before it came out, I just thought I'd, I'd go for it. I called one of the comic shops that's near my work, and I just thought, hey, what the heck? They get some of the Hero Click stuff, and they happen to have a copy of it, so I picked it up. But it's it's the same way, you know. I, I went around, I did the drive to all the big box stores, and I was looking at Targets and all the, you know, all, <laughs> I, I did all that stuff. But it was a little a little difficult to, to come by for sure. It was like Where's Waldo on Twitter. Like all my account was just full of people who were just, I found it, I found it, <laughs> or you know, I've I've visited like five different stores and there's nothing, you know, and then finally they find it and all the excitement. Um, I think it's the starter packs that have been uh, primarily yes, yeah, shorted, yeah, right? Packs. So. The question was, what, you know, what do we think about that? Um, I don't think it was intentional. There is, there's, there are some theories going around that you know this is a, an attempt to drive up hype, and I understand the attraction to believing that. But I believe that companies like money, and they like lots of it. And if they have a product to sell, they want to sell it because it puts money in their pockets. Um, what I really think happened, to be honest, um, and the example I use is there's all kinds of movies that get made for you know millions and millions of dollars and then totally flop. Right, going into a project, you don't really know up front. Even if you're confident in your product, you don't know for sure how well is it going to take off, you know. And you don't want to like overproduce either. So you're trying to guess, and oftentimes those manufacturing decisions are getting made well before your marketing has gone into full swing. You know, you have to talk to China. You have to get all that stuff lined up because there's lots of other people competing for things to get produced. So my suspicion, and again, this is totally there's no insider knowledge here. My suspicion is just they made their best guess. It was under what uh, the demand ended up being, and so things got shorted. Now, I could be totally naive. I could be completely wrong, but really all of this is speculation. I just, I guess I tend to steer away from more cynical s speculation and towards, well, there's lots of other possibilities. Maybe it's one of those, you know. Um, but, you know, that's, that's my thoughts on it. What about you, Matt? Do you have any opinions? Yeah, I'm kind of in the same thing. I don't, I don't think there was any ill will intended, and... You know, to be fair too, it, this is a this is a collectible model. I think the last thing that someone making a collectible model would try to do would be to short. I mean, if anything, they're going to want to try to get. I mean, the the concept of a collectible model in the, the grand scheme is to get you to buy a lot of the packs of them to to get them, rather than just having a full set. You're going to collect them. You get to open the boosters and all the excitement. They want to sell you the product. I don't think they'd ever try to short it intentionally. I think it was just it's expensive. Like as you said, it's expensive to make the products. It's a lot of investment up front, and I think it it just didn't work out for them. They just didn't make the right call for it. It's hard. It's hard to know when something is going to be so successful like that. Yeah, and the thing is, um, last night they put up a post. Actually, WizKids did for those because they recognized the struggle. People are finding the the individual boosters, but they're not finding the starter. And so what they did was they put up a a, a link on their. I think it's on the WizKids page itself. I'll put a link in the description of this video later that has print and play basically uh, elements for the starter. So all of the basic action cards. Uh, and then also like a, a card for the sidekicks that shows you what the you know the side distribution is. So if you want to use a regular D6 temporarily a as your sidekicks, then you roll them, and if you get a two, then that means it's the energy side or you know the lightning bolt side or what have you. So I, I think they're trying to you know scramble to make up the difference here in the meantime to tie people over. So if people find the boosters and they want to pick those up, then they they can still play the game, right? So uh, yeah, one way or the other, it looks like they're trying to make an attempt to, to do yeah, something there. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Oh, we've got a question. Was that Punisher free to field? Um, 
none of the Punishers are free to field. I wonder if during the playthrough, did I forget to pay? Yeah, at the end, uh, I noticed it too. Uh-oh. Some, some other people clearly picked up on it. Uh-oh. Uh, whenever you uh, field the Punisher, you actually still have it out here. This is what you had. You only have one energy to spend, which you needed to field the Punisher. But oh, then but then I used the yeah. to knock out the Defender. So, so Matt, did this, did this change the outcome? Do we have to go back? We might have to go back <laughs> here, Matt. So, so I wasn't able to use the Green Goblin effect, basically, yeah. right? Yeah, so, to knock out my, my pawn. I would so, have had the option of taking two life to prevent you from knocking him out, and then he could have blocked. So if yeah, that's right. If you had taken the two life, right, to keep from knocking out your one last defender, yep. Then you'd be down to three life, and then I'm assuming you would have tried to block the Punisher with the pawn. Uh, with, with the, the pawn, pawn, which <laughs> means a total, which means a total of three would have gotten through. You didn't have a gambit. Oh, I didn't have a gambit. Oh, sorry. So then a total of only one would have gotten through, and you would have been at two life. Yeah. I think you had it. <laughs> so I, I was. I, I think you had it either way. I think. I mean, a couple of turns in, and I made some pretty bad. I made some pretty big mistakes early on there that I recognize now, probably because I was nervous doing it live or something, uh, or you know whatever. I guess I'll make that excuse. What can I say? It's not watch it played unless we've made a mistake. That's right. right? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> a lot, there's a lot of pressure. Did you see no, anything else, Pat? Were there any other slip-ups? Yeah. Um, oh, I, I pointed, like, I, I think I pointed one or two out while we were doing Yeah, we were able to correct them in the moment, yeah. I think, honestly, that's just a big mentality of gamers, though, is uh, once you are very clearly going to lose, you don't care anymore. You, you kind of stop paying attention to exactly what the details are, and someone's like, I'm hitting you for the end, and it's just like, it's over. <laughs> it's already over anyway. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Please put me out of my misery. I don't care how you did it. Just let's yeah. Start again. What did you uh, What did you end up with? Fourteen, fourteen to my zero. I think it was fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Listen, fourteen to your two, technically. Right. So I mean, I mean, that's how the game ended. Fourteen to two. You're not dead. <laughs> I could have chipped a few more points off. I, I think. I think my biggest error in that was like I, I mentioned it a few times, but um, I got excited to attack with my angel because I was like, oh, he's going to be unblockable. But that that's just part of the strategy I was going for. But I left all of your other guys. I had other guys to attack with. They should have attacked with them, and I made that mistake. So. I know now. I think that's one of the other things that, that people might say is different about this versus Quarters. Now, I haven't played Quarters in a little while, and I haven't played with all the expansions. Mm -hmm. um, but th there is certainly some decision-making here. How many defenders do I leave behind? Do I swing with everything? If I don't swing with everything, do I need to save some energy to, to fire off a couple of global abilities? Even just being mindful of those global abilities can be good. Like I said, there was a point there where I spent a question mark energy, and I probably shouldn't have. I should have saved that so I could have fired off one of these other effects. Uh, in order to be able to potentially, you know, wipe your field with that nice little green goblin global ability. So I think there's a, there's a bit more going on here in that regard anyway. But let's see, do we have any other uh, questions? Let's see, what do we got here? Okay, <laughs> let's put that one up. Okay. So um, Pierre Francisco asks, has Luke blessed Rodney's dice set? Um, <laughs> Not exactly, but I had him just sort of hover in the general area. Luke, why don't you come over here for a second, buddy? Luke is actually here. Um, <laughs> and that I knew it wouldn't be fair to have him rolling the dice. I, yeah, I appreciate that. Right? Okay. Why don't you come over here, Luke? Watch out for the wires here, and you can say a quick hello. Um, yeah, no, Luke is, uh, is often... You have to lean in right here. So <laughs> there we go. There. Hey. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, Luke. Luke met Matt actually as well. And when I talk about you, Matt, he remembers you meeting me in the uh, the lobby of the hotel there uh, yep. in New Hampshire. So, um, so yeah, so so Luke did not uh, bless the set. Usually, what he does is just beats me. Um, and so I learned through through you know his tutelage. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, what else have we got for a question here? Oh, here we go. Here's a here's a fun one. Uh, Jeff Briggs wants to know who is your favorite card. And what card do you hate most that an opponent may bring? <laughs> well, I think I know. I know. I know what Pep thinks is his most hated card. Um, let's see. I, I think I don't want Matt bringing any more of his cards that have like six sides uh, for the hero, <laughs> six levels. Um, no, my my favorite. It's hard because I like Marvel, so I, I'm drawn to the characters that I like. You know what I mean? So I, I want to say Punisher. I'm not saying that the Punisher ones are the, the, the best or the most effective. There's actually some really cool ones. One of the ones I didn't end up using 
was Captain America. And Pep saw this on the table, and he kind of pointed it out too, like, oh, this one looks cool. And his uh, The Star Spangled Avenger, it says, when fielded, knock out each of your opponent's sidekick characters and gain one life for each sidekick knocked out this way. And, and that's just a really neat way of clearing the field, because oftentimes you use those sidekicks as defenders. Well, not only am I getting rid of all of them, I'm now buffering up my life too, right? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a pretty slick one. But I think, like, I think Luke would say his favorite is that Gambit. Would you agree, Luke? Is it the Gambit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Gambit's give, uh, Luke's giving me his agreement on that one. And, yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with, with Punisher for that. What about you, Matt? Favorite? Uh, I you know I like like I said I'm the, I'm coming in the same boat as you. I like a lot of different. Um, I like a lot of characters. Um, I, I I lean towards Rogue. I really like Rogue. She's one of my favorite heroes. I'm kind of was an anti-hero for a while, but I, I kind of like her story. I think she's cool. I, you know, my daughter's name is Anna Marie. Don't tell my family that. I don't think they know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's too good. <laughs> um, but I, you'll, I, I you'll tell her though, that. right? You'll like in private right. daughter dad time, and you're reading the yeah. comics. You're like. This is where you get your name. <laughs> right, we've got. I've got like. Don't tell your mother. Captain America's body on it, and then her head is at the top. Of it. It's really cool. So yeah, like I got Captain America, but there's no costumes for Rogue that we can find for for infants yet. But maybe we'll get there. But uh, I like some of the Rogue stuff, uh, and I've I've been using a lot of the the Mister Fantastic card, uh, the the one that I actually fielded here. Yeah. Um, it's one that I that I did bring over from some of the cards that I've used before, and I, I like his defensive uh, ability, and I like the global ability that he brings. And uh, he gets basically two attack and two defense when people, whenever uh, he's blocking, which is great because it right. catches you off guard. You see this sort of a, a, a semi-weak character standing there, and he ends up packing a pretty good punch just as a blocker. Yeah, cool. his, his his defense is already pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it keeps him in, and it buffs up to that attack, so he can swing back pretty good. Yeah, his um, his that global ability is cool. Yeah, that combined with, and I, I also brought I brought Professor X. It's the first time I feel with him. I wanted to shut down your ability to use my global actions. That's why I put him in. So I wanted to be able to use Mr. Fantastic to block you and, and keep making you attack me, and I could block you with him and my other characters and then have Professor X basically lock out your ability to use global actions. That's what I was trying to do. Uh, <laughs> I like the concept of his character a lot, basically. I think it's a good idea. So, well, what, what about... Favorites, yeah. Do you have a favorite? Pep, you and I have played a few times. Is, did anything stand out for you as a favorite? Um... I haven't seen everything because I haven't played through everything, but I definitely liked the uh, the Hawkeye that just popped out and did four damage to a to something whenever he pops in. Yeah, that's right. It's it's when he's fielded too, it's right? Fielded. Yeah, as soon as he's fielded, it's like, hey, instant four, a, a damage, right? So that's pretty decent. What about our least favorite? Go, go ahead, Pep. You can start with this. Uh, Matt, are you able to hear Pep through the mic? Yeah, I can hear. Okay. It's uh, it's definitely Black Widow. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember which one it is. Like the, the super main. rare. It's the super rare one, but it's the one that whenever it attacks, it deals two damage unless you uh, spin a character down. Mm -hmm. My only problem is that it costs two, so it's just like, first turn, what do you do? Buy two Black Widows. Next turn, what do you do? Probably buy another <laughs> two Black Two more. Widow, or two more if you can. And then yeah. what do you do whenever you get Black Widows? Win the game. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's interesting because was it? I think it was you, Matt. You tweeted out a picture of a card you thought could potentially deal with this. Yes, the, the Black Widow problem. I'm calling it a problem. I, I think I kind of agree. I'll I'll mention another character in a second. But what was the? Uh, it was a Loki card, right? Yeah, I've actually got it right here. I can I can maybe show it on the screen here. Uh, I like this is another card that I thought was really cool, and uh, I had tried to use this to to kind of shut her down. Um, maybe you can see that a little bit if it focuses. Um, he basically, it, it's it's the rare Loki, but he has the ability to uh, basically take a character and, and their an opponent's character and say you can't feel that that character at all. Um, so right. as long as the Loki character is in play, that that Loki character picks one card and they can't feel it at all. So I was just trying to completely shut down Black Widow, but he costs five, so he's hard to get out of. <laughs> <laughs> he costs five, so by the time you've got him out, you've paid for him, got him into your bag, drawn him out, hopefully uh, rolled the character side. Yeah, Black Widow has uh, assassinated you. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not saying she's unanswerable, but so far she seems really, really, really strong. Probably one of the first you know, really rare cards I have to go, hmm, yeah, that's pretty pretty beastly. I think one of the other ones that's, that's kind of crazy good, um, shoot, I don't have it here. You, you don't mind grabbing that, Pat? It's, a, it's the Green Goblin, and Matt, I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. It's the one that, I think it's every time, it, I think it's when you field him, is it fielding him or is it attacking with him? Anyway, it's, it's based on the number of sidekicks you have out in your field. He just automatically does that amount of damage. 
Oh so, yeah, that must be his super rare then. Yeah, let me let me see here. <laughs> yeah, there's the Black Widow. Um, it's Serena. 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 I'm getting a phone call. One moment, please. <laughs> yes, hello. You're on Watch It Played Live. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. That's almost the entire Smith family now. That was Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's let's look at this one. So, it's the uh, yeah, it is the Green Goblin Gobby. He's called, and it has the red band. Some people were asking, how can you tell the rareness? It is this little thin band here. The, the color will tell you. Um, it says, when fielded, so you don't even have to attack with it, but when fielded, he deals one damage to your opponent for each sidekick in the field. And I love dumping sidekicks in the field. So if I can get two or three of those out, then just fielding him. And he's a pretty low cost. He's three. I might be hitting you for three unblockable damage. It's another one you might want that Loki card for. Mm -hmm a little bit down in the comments, too, the idea of just constantly keeping your sidekicks fielded and using them to, to call to get more energy for later. Yeah. And especially with something like King Goblin, that's a perfect strategy because you just send right. tons of sidekicks out so that you can block with your opponent and constantly re-roll them, and then just keep playing Green Goblin. It's like, oh, he comes out, I deal six damage to you? Yes, yeah. Like, <laughs> Outrageous. <laughs> okay, what Matt. What does he cost to, uh, to buy, if you don't mind me asking? I'm no, sure. no, he's a, he's a three. He's a three? Wow, yes. that's <laughs> yes. That would I guess I would compare that to Honestly, I don't know if it makes me fine at five or six or something. Yeah. yeah. I think that's from what you had said yesterday there when we were having that the little sort of test set up, um, that's sort of like that one black widow card. That was kind of like the, the, the one card that we had both kind of said, Yeah, it seems a little bit strong, but for the most part the other the the Wolverine super rare and uh like there's a Mr. Fantastic Super. Neither one of them really seem to be too crazy. They seem they're they maybe a little bit better for a certain situation, but that's, that Goblin one seems that seems pretty good too. <laughs> I think Pep's right. It's it, the effect is on par with a lot of the other cards. It's yeah. it's the value. It's the price. Being able to get them out so quickly yeah. um, makes them pretty powerful. All right. I think that that hails that question. We got another one here. Hey, Scott King is going to be up next. Um, Scott King has done a wonderful... First of all, he's a, an amazing photographer, and he takes pictures uh, of board games. I'm sure other things as well, but the things I, <laughs> what I know him from is, is from his board game <laughs> pictures. And he also did a, an awesome board gaming calendar, um, which we, we showed at one point. I'm, I'm sure, I'm hoping, he's going to do another one this year uh, because I'm definitely going to back it, and I highly recommend people to back it. It's the first calendar I've ever had that I really actually liked and I'm happy to have it on display. All right, he's got a question. Since you guys have had the game for a while, have you found any strategies that are auto-win, or does the game seem fairly balanced? Well, I guess we kind of... <laughs> it's, it's, Luke's saying here, it's fairly balanced. I agree, it is fairly balanced. I think there's a couple of cards that so far, in my exploration, there doesn't seem to be a, an immediate answer, and I guess that's what the expansions are for, right? And, and they have announced uh, an expansion, Uncanny X-Men, isn't it? I guess it, yeah. I think so, yeah. So, but again, I mean, that's just me from my, and I've I've played the game a few times now. But um, my my instinct says that that's a, those Black Widow and Goblin cards are pretty strong. Um, yeah. What about you? You've played quite a few games now too, Matt. What's your feeling, Ben? Yeah, I think that I think that there's I haven't seen any like you know auto win strategies, but I think I agree with a lot of what you said. Those cards that 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 card seems to to have a pretty tough answer. I mean, you certainly have to build a strategy around it if you know somebody's going for that, but I mean, I guess to, to what we were talking about earlier, if some of the folks are worried about rarity having a large effect in the game, there's there's so few. There's four super rares out of about 137 cards, 132 cards. It's not. I mean, it's if you know somebody's going to be building that, you you can counter it. You could build around it. It's not it's not unstoppable. Um, but I, I don't think it has a huge effect on the game. Aside from those few cards, I think the game is seemingly balanced regardless of rarity. I think for the most part, the rare cards just kind of do something more outrageous, but they usually cost a lot more to do that. They usually balance usually. out. <laughs> yeah. For the most part, anyway. I see it's, It seemed pretty balanced to me. I mean, and again, there's dice rolling, so that kind of helps keep things on par. Maybe if something is really strong, you just won't roll it or, you know. Yes, that's right. You do have you have a little bit of randomness to mess with your plans too, right? You can't come with a perfect plan. Yeah. Um, all right, well, that's that's that one. We have another question here. Sure. Oh yeah, how are we storing our copies of the game? And Pep, I, I saw you grab this. Here, Luke, if you want this, you can. Here. All right. Well, this is how I'm storing it. 
Uh, I forget the Plano number. I don't know if they have them imprinted somewhere. 3700. Zero, zero. And so I've got a couple of the different characters in uh, sharing a, a space, and I just, just try to make them different colors so they don't blend together. And then there's enough room over here for the action dice and all of the uh, the common guys here and, and so on. So this, I'm using that, and then I also have a binder, just a typical uh, card sleeve binder, that actually uh, fits the sleeved cards, which is nice. So I can keep them in the sleeves if I don't want to bring them out, and I can also just store them in the, in the binder, which I find a lot easier. Just sort of if I want to build a team, I can just flip through the binder. What about you, Matt? What have you found? Yeah, I do the same thing for the cards. I get a binder that I put them in. They fit right in with the sleeves, and it's nice because you've got, in rows of three, you've got three types of every card, aside from the, the starter ones, and it works yeah. out. That works really well. I've got these little, uh, I kind of, this happened by chance. I had one of these laying around. Sorry, I'm probably making a lot of noise on the mic. Yeah. These little, uh, little GMT token trays, I think they're GMT. Um, they are, yeah, that's right. They, they fit perfectly, and I've actually got all the dice will fit in here. And obviously, some of them are out here on the play field, but, uh, and then two slots at the end for the uh, the basic action dice, and I, the starter dice I basically just store in uh, inside of a deck box, and in the deck box it just holds the, the basic action cards along with... Basically, between this, I, I've carried a binder, these two dice trays, and a deck box, and I got everything in the game. That's really decent, actually. I have one of those GMT trays, and I think that you can order them from their site. And it's, I think you have, do you have at least one of every different character in terms of the dice? Yes, I do, yeah. Okay, so and two of those trays fits it perfectly. Yeah, exactly. It fits everything, in, including the basic action dice, and I've got six. You can fit up to six of every die in there. You don't really need that many, but you can put mm -hmm. up to six in each one of those, and, um, or if you have two of them, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, three bucks a piece, they're not too bad. One thing I've noticed people talking about, too, when you get them out of the booster, sometimes the cards are a little bit bent. Uh, okay. yes. You want to talk about that a little bit, Matt, and, and sort of how that's affected your gameplay or whatever? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Um, it it hasn't affected my gameplay at all. As I was opening them, when I was started to open those first boosters, I was like, wow, people were not kidding. These things come pretty warped. Hmm. But within a couple hours, mine had already settled down. I Just put them, putting them into a stack, putting them into a deck box, and just laying them on their back, most of the warping had gone away within a few hours, and I put the ones I actually use are all sleeved in the binders. Those of all, all the warping is gone. They all look normal now, and uh, the the commons that I have actually, if you want, I'll step away for one second. I'll grab my stack of commons. That I yeah, have. sure, perfect. I know, like I saw people posting pictures on Twitter, and the the cards were like, you know, in a stack. They were just all kind of like warped and funny looking, and I okay. I would have been disappointed seeing that out of the package too, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is my stack of like some of the leftover like the the extra commons and uncommons I have. I mean, you can see these all came like all the other ones, like super warped and stuff. But they've just been sitting here for. Can you see them? Okay, is it too? No, it's them back closer to yourself. Yeah, slide them back here. Can you see them? They're 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 fine. I mean, they're yeah. they. They're not perfect. There's some, like, I have some that look a little worse because this is one that we opened late last night. This one's still a little bit kind of... But this stack's been here for a, a day or two, and it just kind of, you know, leveled up. It's not too well, bad. If you put them in a sleeve or if you put some weight on top of them, they're fine. I saw Keith Collins. He had this, like, little tiny press with screws, and he put, like, his, his, his deck inside of this vise and just tightened it, right? And he said the next day they were, they were fine. I mean, the nice thing is, of course, in this game, you're not really using the cards. They sit out on the table, so you don't have to worry about, you know, someone being able to tell which card you have because one's more bent than the other. But uh, I, am, I am glad to hear that they've been straightening out because, you know, that's, yeah. people like their stuff to be nice for the most part. Yeah. We got any other uh, questions here, Pat? Lots of questions. Oh, boy. What time are we at here? 3.30? Okay. We can answer a few more questions, I think, as long as people are enjoying it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Let's, let's hit select on that one. So this is a question from William Miller. Hey, William. Um, Matt, he's asking, Matt, where did you get your play mat? Is it the print-and-play one as well, just bigger? Go ahead, Matt. I, I, I should give the person who did this credit on BoardGameGeek. It was one of the ones on BoardGameGeek. It included the tutorial. It, it, it was like a large... This was one that someone had made for a template to put on a mouse pad. And I think it was a high-resolution photo. It was like 7 megabytes or something. It was really high resolution. I just took it and printed it on uh, cardstock. Just regular old cardstock. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. I Unfortunately, I can't give the person credit who went and did this. They took the one from the book and just blew it up and made it a little higher resolution, but... Um, yeah, just Board Game Geek, the, under the file section, there's a ton of different play mats that people have made and customized, and, um, you know, take, some of them have taken the little tutorial arrows off, some of them have added extra things, there's, there's a lot of good resources there. I remember seeing, I think, I don't know if it was Joel Eddy from Drive Through Review, or somebody had put up pictures of the mat on, like, a mouse pad, 
and I think they did it through printerstudio.com. Yeah. So I hear that might be a resource people would want to consider if they want something, you know, a little more permanent or something. Uh, mine's, you know, the one I had I showed on the show at one point. It's just I used foam cores because I want something a little more sturdy, and then just uh, printed out the mat on photo paper and stuck it to it with glue. <laughs> so. And actually, with the photo paper, it has a nice yeah, little like, glossy yeah. finish. I would have thought that would yeah. send you. Yeah. Like, you know, a company or something like that looks really high quality. Pretty decent. Yeah. All right. Well, what else we got here? Oh, so it's asking here, what's the average? Alan, Alan's asking, what is the average price point to get a good dice set? I think I, I'm wondering if by good he means like a, a competitive team. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, you need the, you need the starter. You want that because you need to have the sidekicks and so on. I don't know, Matt. You opened up like a, a sixty pack gravity feed. Would you say you need that much in order to create a interesting competitive team? Would you need half? Oh, what do you think? That's that's actually a good question. Um, I don't think if you need, if you want some variety. I mean, a, a couple dozen uh, booster packs would definitely get you in line for for some good variety. I'll tell you what I did is I started out with I bought the starter kit, which is about fifteen dollar MSRP. And I bought one of the booster gravity feeds. I bought a whole thing, which is probably more than, than some are going to want to spend on it. But those are MSRP for $60. Okay. And at the end of that, I had opened a full 60 packages, and I had at least two of every die, die in the game. So I had uh, the starter set comes with two of the eight characters. And through the booster packs, I ended up with at least one extra for all of them. So by the time of just opening one gravity feed, I had every character in the game and at least one die of every character as well. So it will ever... Uh, Almost two of every character in the game, so the distribution wasn't bad. And so, if you, I don't want to say you have to buy an entire gravity. You don't have to buy sixty booster packs to be competitive. The starter kit actually allows for a bit of fun just from what's there. You can make a couple of a small teams. You could make a you know a four on four or a you know a three v three or something like that out of it pretty easily. So I don't know. Maybe a, a, try your luck with a dozen booster packs and see what you get. And I I think the distribution is is pretty fair. I, I don't think that it's be crazy. I think you can end up with some good stuff for not spending a ton of money. I think some people were expecting to find at least you know one super rare in each of those gravity feeds, and uh, people clearly aren't. At least I shouldn't say. I mean, what do I have to go by uh, my Twitter feed? Couple so of Twitter, yeah. What, what, whatever that percentage of the buying community is, <laughs> it seems like you know you're not you're not finding one super rare in every single uh, gravity feed, but. Mm -hmm. Um, as you say, you get you're going to get some rares, you're going to get some uncommons, and uh, I, I think I'd agree with you. Get a star set and get um, you know five or six, maybe twelve of these boosters, yeah. just to give you the variety, to give you some playing around time, and then you can build a couple of decent teams and try them out and see you know what you like, and what you don't like. I, I you know I keep tend I tend to keep going back to similar characters because again I the Marvel thing I, I I like to pick out the characters I like right, mm -hmm. um, and there's still lots of other room to explore uh, just within this core set. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing what the expansion provides, but there's lots of playroom just in this core set of cards. I forget how many exactly there are <laughs> of cards. I have the sheet somewhere, but it's over 100 at least. Uh, the cards is 100, 132 cards right. in the set, and I think characters is 38, I want to say, something yeah. like that. Yeah, like something he, even the match that we just played, Matt, um, like if we played it a second time, I feel like there'd be different things that would happen. Like there's a number of characters I didn't feel that I might try yep. something different next time. You know, I might, you might try something Definitely different. Definitely try something different next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> let's let's see if we get any other uh, questions here. Um, oh, as, let's uh, the first one there, Pap, and then we'll do that other one there as well. Uh, Brendalf wants to know, can I ask where you get that awesome Marvel shirt? Well, I don't think this is a Marvel shirt, is this? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> is, are you wearing a Marvel shirt under there? I wear one are you? <laughs> are you really? Oh, he is too. That's awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's the Hulk. It's the Hulk. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so I'm not sure he meant your shirt or my shirt. I, I don't know where I got mine, honestly. I think it was at, like, you know, some generic men's t-shirt place. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a story for mine. Then. Actually, I think mine was, no, I know where mine, mine was Cole's. Where did you get yours? So, I went to see uh, Thor 2 mm -hmm. in Toronto, and uh, there was a guy who looked like he owned a comic book store, because you know what those people look like. <laughs> wow. But, <laughs> uh, he was there, and he uh, was doing trivia, and he was giving out t-shirts, and, uh, so one of the questions he asked, I forget what the first question was, but somebody else got it really quick. And the second one was, what's the name of Thor's hammer? 
I'm like, I know that. It's Mjolnir. I knew it, like, super fast. So I just jump up and, like, waving around, shouting it. Nobody else said anything. I just looked like a complete <laughs> idiot. Everybody else was just in their seats, ready for the movie. I'm sitting here shouting. You were reacting like everyone else. You were competing with everybody else calling yeah, yeah. this answer. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was, was going to be a tight competition, but no. You know, That's great. And, uh, I wanted a Thor shirt, but they, they were random. I had to pick one. I'm just impressed with how well it rolls off your tongue, because I always stumble over with that. Yeah. Oh, Mjolnir? Mjolnir. 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 Yeah, yeah. Mjolnir. I couldn't get that right either. What about you, Matt? Where'd you get your shirt? Oh, uh, I got this from um, the the. There's a computer game, uh, Marvel Heroes. That uh, this was this was a gift. I got this at PAX East, not this year, but the year before. Um, so a, year, a little over a year ago, and uh, it was for the the video game. If you pre-ordered like a, a starter pack there or something, they gave you right. a, a T-shirt. So I picked it up there. It's actually a really cool shirt. I, it's one of my better video game shirts. Yeah, that is awesome. actually pretty sweet. <laughs> it's got Doctor Doom with a little cosmic cube on it, and they, it, it's cool. Yeah. We got all like the little different. Uh, you can see a little Punisher down there. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, Punisher's there definitely. That's all right, yeah, That's all right man. All right. For some reason, who cares about there that one? Let's let's get Craig's question there. It's been uh, sitting. Um, this is a little embarrassing, uh, so I didn't pick this one sooner. But uh, Craig said something pretty nice here. He said, "This is incredible. Watching, uh, <laughs> actually watching all this live, as you guys are awesome, especially you, Rodney. Thank you, Craig. That's nice of you to say. Um, I really, I had the easy part. I think Pep did, <laughs> did all the hard work <laughs> managing the camera and getting everything set up and hosting this. So, but no, that's very kind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. When is the? Yeah, let's answer this next one from Jacob. <coughs> When is the expansions scheduled to be released, and what have you heard about it? I wish my memory was better. I remember reading the release from WizKids. I, did you read it, Matt? Was it fall? I, I, I thought I saw October, but I, I mean, I don't quote me on that. I don't. Yeah. Like, because I know, I know it wasn't Gen Con. I was pretty sure it wasn't Gen Con. Then maybe they'll have a teaser there or something. Because I right. Was thinking, Ooh, right. I should bring a truckload of cash to Amazon so I can uh, to uh, to Gen Con so I can buy that. <laughs> I'll tell you something. I, now that you mention that, I'm definitely going to be bringing uh, at least one team to Gen Con. This is so portable. I'll throw the dice and everything into a deck box and uh, hopefully be able to throw down with people. I'd love to just like sit down for part of an evening anyway. I think you could, you could run through a, a bunch of you know a bunch of challengers that way. It'd be a lot of fun. Uh, it'd be interesting too to see what other people are you know are building in their decks. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm bringing Black Widow and Gobby. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. great. <laughs> Okay, let's see what else we got here. Oh, uh, Matt, Alex would like to know what sleeves are you using? Oh, uh, these are Deckprot. They're called. They're called Deckprot, and they're standard. They make two different types of sleeves. Um, they make small, which are for like the Yu-Gi-Oh size cards. If I pronounce that right, and uh, the other ones are like your Magic: The Gathering Pokemon size. So they're called Deckprot. D E K P R O T. Hmm, okay. uh, I actually I, I get these because I, I there's a it's an eBay seller that sold them in bulk and like a couple like six months ago I bought like four thousand of them in bulk or something because it brought the price down to something I was willing to pay you know sleeves are kind of pricey especially because I sleeve most of my games and so I wanted to make sure I kind of bought them in bulk to make my own for my own sanity <laughs> knowing I wasn't spending that much money on sleeves. And as people can see, you have a couple of games there. Uh, I yeah. <laughs> no, I actually, I had Matt, um, I, I, <laughs> I don't think Matt wants to get in the business of doing this, but I had Matt help me out. He ordered a whole bunch bulk for me as well <laughs> because uh, it was just, it was easier to get you to ship them, honestly. The shipping yeah. to Canada directly from the seller was going to be pretty brutal, so. And that was helpful. And I, I use, uh, not that anyone asks or cares, um, but I'm using, uh, what are they? These are the Deck Pro, the standard uh, Ultra Pro, Ultra Pro, yeah, the standard Ultra Pro. sleeves. I really like them. They're, I, I wish they didn't have the little hologram on the back. Um, yeah, but yeah. otherwise, yeah, uh, otherwise, that's right, or front. <laughs> otherwise, they're very tight fitting. Yeah. So when you try to fit them in a box, I, tend, I find these tend to fit in where some sleeves don't. All right. Um, let's, let's answer Boots. Couple more questions here, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up. <laughs> Someone said best of three gameplay. Well, maybe we'll come back and do this. I would like to do this again, even with different challengers. Uh, this was kind of a test run. I'd like to figure out what's going on with the video quality, because um, I know that Pep's got fantastic bandwidth here. Uh, I know because I upload a lot of my videos from this apartment. <laughs> 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 but uh, but uh, yeah, like literally, it takes eight hours at home for me to upload one of my videos. I come here and it takes eight minutes. It's it's ridiculous. It's crazy fast. So it could even be just my laptop. Maybe it can't process this bandwidth. Who knows? Who knows? Um, let's see. What else we got here? 
Uh, someone noting that, uh, Jonathan's noting that your collection, Matt, has uh, grown over the past couple of years. W would you say, Matt, that it's been in the last year or two that you've really purchased uh, the bulk of your games, or has this been a longer process? Uh, I would say the last year or so, probably not. Just I, I've kind of slowed down on, on getting games in the last since since we had the baby like nine months ago. We had to right. kind of change things up a little. But before that, yeah, <laughs> the last maybe six months or about a, yeah about a year and a half ago, I'd say I, I was probably getting mo the most of my games. Uh, <laughs> I, I was I, I mentioned before. I think as a, as one of your on one of your um, table talk back uh, episodes, I was. I kind of got out of. I did a lot of video gaming and a lot of computer tinkering and stuff at home, and that was that's a pretty expensive hobby to have. And I backed out of that and went into to board games. And I don't know if it's really been any cheaper for me. <laughs> it's just kind of transferred <laughs> to a different money pit. But right. uh, yeah, it's. I got to tell you, and and the reason why I get I, I I mentioned it. I think I put it on Twitter the other day. But like Rodney is like my you know my Oprah of video or of board gaming because whatever he puts on his channel, I'm just like that looks awesome, and I'll. Generally, go pick it up. I'll pretty much do whatever Rodney tells me to do or whatever his show tells me to play. So, Well, listen, I, uh, that's something I wanted to mention, too, and I should have done this sooner, Matt, but you're also putting those games in your collection to good use. You've got your own YouTube channel. You're running Board Game Replay, and uh, if people aren't aware of that, it would be great to take a moment here and just let them know a little bit about it. Um, you, why don't you take a couple seconds, Matt, and, and go ahead. Feel free to plug away. Cool. Thanks so much, Rodney. <laughs> you bet. Rodney's been awesome. First of all, like I, mean, I probably no one would know about me if he hadn't helped me out here. He's been really, really cool to, uh, and he's been a friend through all of it, and and someone I can go to and, and a mentor in in doing this. So, uh, board game replay is a series that we kind of came up with an idea for. When we got done playing board games or, or anything, we'd sit down and go, "Man, that was that was a ton of fun." Let's and we'd sit there at the table for half an hour after the game had ended and just talk about what we did and talk about strategies and say, "Oh man, on turn three, what if we had done this?" and we, we found ourselves always doing that, so we thought it might be fun to try to make a YouTube series trying to capture that same experience of, uh, of playing games. So that's basically what we do in the show. The, this, the show starts with us. We give you a quick rules breakdown so you kind of know what's going on. It doesn't cover everything. It's no watch it played, for sure. But we just kind of give you a rough idea of how the rules work, and then you join us right after we finish a game and all the banter that goes along with it. And we actually cut back to, to instant replays of, of some of the moments that we thought were funny. You get to... You get to see those moments when you, you stab somebody in the back or you make a really big move and you get to see the laughter and the, the fun that comes out of it. So anyway, that's yeah, no, I think I think it's very cleverly put together uh, because you give just enough of the game so even if you don't know it, when you're hearing people talk about it, you have you understand the language of it. You can kind of relate to what's going on. And yeah, I, I've said before about your show, it's sometimes talking about games you've played, it's kind of like you had to be there to really enjoy it. But you help people be there because when you do those replays, you're actually showing the moment that happened. Because you record the whole gameplay, even though you don't show the whole gameplay, you have it there so you can go back and, and into the archives and pull out that moment that was interesting and that was, was cool. Right. And so uh, you know, I think it's been great. And I, I'm, listen, I've been happy to talk to people about your show because you're doing something unique and interesting. And, uh, and hey, I watch it too. Too. So, <laughs> so it's great. Thanks so much. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got a question for you, Matt. Um, Matt, are you going to have more full playthroughs on your show, even more mid-heavy games rather than the fast ones that you already had and were awesome? That comes from Spiros. I know you just recorded a game that I wouldn't call light. Um, do you want to <laughs> spoil that a little bit? Am I letting the cat out of the bag? Yeah, no, no. Actually, we, we didn't get to we didn't get to record that yesterday. We that was a uh, we we had a practice game in, but um, we are. To, to answer that question first uh, about um, full playthroughs, I think I think we're going to get there. I think I'm going to try to to do what some of um, the users had suggested. The viewers were saying, "Hey, it'd be cool if you guys did more full playthroughs." And we had even thought we'll do our standard replay format where it's like the talk show. We show the replays, and then maybe a couple days later or a week later, we just put up the full gameplay videos for for people who might want to watch that. I'm, I'm still working on that. There's still some a fair amount of editing that goes into. Um, into one of those episodes, it's usually between you know four and eight hours of editing to put one up typically, and I don't have a ton of free time. Time's pretty limited with with, with full time work and and, uh, and the baby and stuff. So as much as we can, we're trying to add to the show and and do those. The full gameplay episodes are great because it's a, it's technically a little less editing, um, but if we and sometimes you know there's rules things and editing three hours of, of uh, a Game of Thrones playthrough or something just to make sure. It, it can be kind of tricky. So I, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable just hitting upload after I put a three-hour video in. And cut. I, <laughs> if, if any of you watched our Space Cadets Night Store video, it was 20 minutes, and I had to go through it pretty carefully to make sure no one had a couple of swears slip into it. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the family. Not, not that my friends are, you know, 
you know, if they swear on or anything, but just, you know, I'd be I feel uncomfortable having to upload yeah. on a raw video. So uh, we might get there someday. I think we might start uploading some some more medium heavyweight games for, for full game playthroughs in the future. So, yeah, stick around for that. We'll get to it at some point, I think. Yeah, very cool. And, and the, the game I was saying that you guys have, that Packers one, that was Game of Thrones, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing Looking forward to seeing that. That's one of the things that's kind of record. It's, it's tricky to get the group together, so. I can't wait for the replays. Like, I want to see people's <laughs> souls crushed and, yes. just, you know, the tangible tension in the room. <laughs> oh, great. We wanted to get to that, that moment, and we had, I'll just tell you, really quick, we had a moment last night where the Wildlings were attacking, and everybody at the table sort of made their own agreements of what they were going to contribute. Two people said, I'm not putting anything in. I don't care. You can make this person get, you know, you can make me the loser. I already know what the card is. And the other two players agreed to match just enough to hit the, the wildling threat and pass it. And they go, right. yeah, we'll put in six. And then one guy puts in seven and wins it and takes the whole reward. It takes the five. It was, it takes the, it was so funny. Like, just the other guy didn't even excuse What? It just, oh, it's great. Just that's the, the, the magic of that game. Just yep. tons of lying. It's great. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's do one more, one more. And I'm sure we can't do more, but we probably should uh, should wrap this up. Um, well, this one I can answer quickly. Someone's just saying, is the rarity distribution the same in all of the the towers? Um, I, I doubt it. I doubt it's exactly. But of course, the more packs you have, the more that that distribution evens out. Um, but I, I can't really say. I'm not sure what WizKids you know model is really is really how it's operating and how they feed those uh, how they fill those feeds. Uh, let's see. Yes, that one we can delete because we already talked about that one earlier. I don't know what the official release date is for Europe, unfortunately. Um, that's something hopefully WizKids knows <laughs> and can uh, pass along. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, um, what do you think about the strategy of permanently fielding your sidekicks to call them so you can uh, isolate your dice rolls two more powerful dice instead. Yeah, Pep was talking about that a little bit earlier. Uh, people have said like the, the, the game doesn't really have a, a calling mechanism, but it does, really, in that you can field the dice. And then they become doubly useful. Not only are they out of your bag, so it increases the odds of you pulling out those dice you really want, but they're also there as a defender. So they're not actually useless anymore. They're still there and performing a useful function. When someone now wants to attack, they know, okay, well, I've got, he's got a bunch of stuff that can block. And those blocked things, if they die, will go into his hand to roll next time. So uh, calling's actually... Uh, a lot easier in some ways because there's not a certain card you have to pull to activate it. But um, yeah, is, is that what you found too, Matt? Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, uh, so let's see what we're kind of powering through these quickly. I think if we can answer quick, we might get through more of these. Um, okay, so we did that one. So yeah, we can get rid of that. Um, <laughs> Matt, you are a golden god from Jonathan Cheney. Uh, just passing that Thanks. along. Thanks, man. I, I believe that's Jonathan Cheney I went to high school with. So, hey, John, how's it going? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, let's see. This is a good question, I think, and one we could probably answer quickly. Um, Brendel asks, or is it Brendel or Brendel? Oh, Brendel, sorry. Uh, is this game recommended for someone who is new to board games like myself because it looks like a lot of fun? I think someone watching my How to Play, the very first one, might feel like, wow, there's a lot of rules to this because they're there are a lot of rules. If you look at Magic the Gathering, their official rule book, not the one you get with the starter pack, like it's 100 pages because there's all kinds of little exceptions and special actions and things like that. And so in, in, our, you know, in our rules videos, we try to cover everything so you don't have to worry about the rule book. But the ultimate game itself, hopefully as people saw here, it's relatively simple. Roll your dice, re-roll them, spend energy to buy dice, add them into your bag, draw them out later, attack with them, and so on. Once you have some of those fundamentals down, there are some special rules like capturing dice, controlling dice, and some of those things, which can add a little bit more to the complexity, but it's not much, honestly. So I feel fairly confident saying that someone who's new into gaming with a little bit of effort should be able to play this. What, what do you think, Pat? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Like yeah. you said, it's all, um, it's all pretty simple. It's just like picking up, you know, well, I mean, something like Magic is more complicated, but the idea, it's kind of the same idea as Magic. You know, you can pick up some very complicated ideas from it and play with cards off only knowing, you know, something someone could explain in five minutes. Right. But there's probably a lot of really complicated cards, but I mean, you know, if you have any issues with certain cards, you can probably just avoid them. And I haven't seen any so far that were complicated in any way. Yeah, you can certainly just simply avoid the effects that you're like, I don't know what this means. Well, don't use that card. <laughs> don't use that card. Use a different one. <laughs> what about you, Matt? Have, you've taught this to a few people, right? Some of your friends, they've taken yeah. to it okay? Yeah, they picked up on it pretty quickly. The um, I guess one of the things I would mention is what the, the first style of the new age of board games, I think that really got me to 
bite and got me addicted to it was the was Dominion was one of the first I played and the deck building model. I didn't know anything. If you said deck building, I would have thought you were talking about magic. So right. um, once I was past, once I understood, oh, I start out with basic cards and throughout the effects of my turn, I'm going to increase my deck and put more in it. That that concept, once my friends all know that, so teaching this game only took a few minutes for them. They they picked it up really fast. As a new player, I think the same thing. Once you understand the concept of you start out with something basic, you add more to it, I think that you'll pick it up really fast. It is funny. I, I probably take it for granted a bit because deck building seems so, so second nature, but if you're approaching it for the first time, you're buying cards that you I don't get to have right away. I, yeah. I discard them as soon as I buy them. Well, why do I want to buy them if they're going right in my discard pile? This is weird. Yeah. Uh, and you're right. I'm so far past that now, I don't think about it, but that is a weird concept at first. If someone is, That's probably the stumbling block. Also, if you get just a starter set, the basic game is very simple. The mm -hmm. Two characters versus another two characters, right? Um, and a, a lower life count. So lots of easy ways to get into it. Um, someone's asking here, Jason uh, Ketwar, have we gotten any error dice? The last set of quarters I purchased had a few terrible misprints. I wouldn't say so. It's tricky. My set has some prototype dice and some of the, the more final ones. There's maybe a couple spots where maybe I've seen some paint not fully in the, um, in the dice, but these are pretty precise small numbers. I'm not surprised. There's a few little spots like that, but nothing that I would say for the price that I'm paying, um, 99 cents for two of these, um, I it's it's good quality to me. Yeah, like you said, there's a little bit. Like I was looking at the ones we were talking there, and there's a yeah. little bit of fake. Yeah, that's right. Them, but I mean, I remember yeah. seeing some of the Coyers dice that you just literally couldn't tell what was on them, like the numbers. Yeah, were good, so. yeah I think if you're trying to compare it to Coyers, no, like there were some Coyers that were bad. Nothing in this. Everything's readable. Yeah. yeah. I don't see any issues. Okay, and I think the last thing I'll just say here. Uh, Jacob uh, says, forget Gen Con. You should come to Essen. I would love to go to Essen, wouldn't you, Matt? Oh, yes. That's what, what, Before I die, i got to go to Essen. But that's, <laughs> that's, unfortunately, that's as far as I can put it in my schedule right now. I think I would die if I would try to go to Essen and fit that into my schedule. My wife would kill me. Uh, <laughs> no, she'd want to come with me, actually. She'd love the travel. Uh, it would be a lot of fun. I, I hope to get there some year. Uh, but it's, it's very expensive. The flight alone would just uh, kill my budget and the budget of Watch It Played. But um, hopefully someday. Uh, for now, we have Gen Con. I'm looking forward to that. But um, I think that's I think that's probably everything. <laughs> is Pep's shirt a Canadian Wolverine cosplay? <laughs> it is kind of yellow. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. Uh, listen. I want to thank everyone who tuned in. We had a number of viewers there, and thank you for your questions. I know we didn't get to all of them, but um, I have a feeling we could be here for a while. We tried to get to all of them. We'll do this again in the future. Uh, I have to say a huge thanks again to Pep for helping out and Matt for joining me at short notice and doing what was kind of a test that turned into kind of an official live show. And uh, yeah, it would be enjoyable to do this again, maybe some other matchups with some other people. So, Matt, anything you want to say before we go? No, I think I had a great time. Thanks a lot for having me. It was fun. Oh, always a pleasure to play games with you. I can't wait to do it again very soon at Gen Con. Looking forward to it. All right, Gen Con. All right, everyone. See you later. Bye, guys. <clears throat>